Hey, this is BT, and this is the BT GP Awards for the 2015 Moto GP season. Thank you guys for watching all my videos. Hope you liked them. Um, I really did, so thank you so much. Just a little fun thing I like to do. Just give out my awards for what I think was the best of the year. Not what anybody else thinks. I'm my own man, so uh, let's get right to it. Um, I'm going to start off the awards with the best photo journalist of the year. Best photo journalist of the year. I got a lot of friends, so I hope I don't break anybody's hearts or feelings, but I have to go with Scott Jones. Scott Jones, um, he, cause he captured the picture that I think, maybe it was the, I was in Austin when it happened, when the dog went on the racetrack and he caught that picture and it just always stuck with me because the dog was scared and they put a red flag and the riders had to avoid him. And I don't know, just something about that picture and Scott captured it. And, um, you know, my buddy, Mr. Wheeler, I hey, love you, buddy, but I got to go, I got to go with Scott Jones. Scott Jones was photo journalist of the year. I hope you guys, I'm going to try to get this picture and post it up for you. Am I good with, uh, with uh, technic technical aspects of this? So, see if I can do this. Hold on. Hey, I hope that came out. Like I said, I'm, I'm not very good technically, as you can tell. So let's get the awards ceremony going. I won't keep you guys long. It's just my BT GP awards. So let's go with Photo Journalist of the Year, Scott Jones. Congratulations, Scott. My Journalist of the Year, Moto GP Journalist of the Year goes to Dave Emmett. I write, if you watch me, I, read, I write an article in Sport Bikes Inc. magazine. And you know, I try to keep it funny. I try to be, you know, serious, but I try to keep it funny, light. But Dave Emmett at Moto Matters, Dave Emmett makes you go, oh my God. I didn't know he wore a size five shoe, and that's why he couldn't upshift right on the third corner because it's at a 45 degree angle, and his birthday was like on June 7th, which makes him a Gemini, and everybody knows Geminis who wear size five shoes can't turn on a 45 degree angle. That's what Dave Emmett is like. So Dave Emmett, congratulations. You're my MotoGP Journalist of the Year. Two years in a row, Dave. Congratulations. Um, my commentator of the year, as much as I love Nick Harris, I love Nick Harris. Commentator of the year goes to Matt Burt. Matt Burt, incredible what he did. He makes qualifying like, oh my God. I mean, he makes he makes anything sound great. Great job, Matt Burt. Great job. Um, I really thought he was awesome this year. I hope he comes back next year. I can't wait to hear him some more. Nick Harris always has my heart. Always. I've never seen a bad word about Nick. He's, he got me addicted to MotoGP. So, Nick Harris, um, you're in my heart, but I got to give it to Matt Burt. On-air personality, got to go to Dylan Gray. Man, Dylan does a great job. He makes you go, Oh my God. When he says, remember in Argentina, Argentina was a great example. He said Mark Marquez's tires were going to fall off in such, such a lap. And that's when Rossi would catch him. And I be damned, Rossi did it. Put it this way. If he would have predicted that in the United States in the 1800s, he'd have been considered a witch and he would have been drowned. Seriously, that's how good he is. I mean, if he was in Vegas, he'd be a billionaire. A billionaire. That's how good Dylan Gray is. Dylan Gray, you are my on-air personality of the year. Congratulations, buddy. Okay, let's go to the Rider Awards. I know you guys are sick of me talking crap about the on-air personalities like myself. Okay, Hustle Award. Hustle Award uh, is for any rider who had an off and had to go get his bike. Any rider who had an off and had to go run and get his bike. It was going to be uh, Maverick Vinales from Valencia because he sprinted toward that bike. I was like, damn, Maverick, go. But it has to go to Mark Marquez because Marquez had a lot of offs. I mean, a lot of offs. And some of them he couldn't even sprint to his bike because he was like, well, that's done. But I got to give it to Mark Marquez just for Argentina alone. He sprinted about 100 yards. And I mean, it was a full sprint. It was so much. Even Hussein Bolt was, that guy is good. I hope he does not race. I hope he does not go to track and field in the next Olympics. I will not win. That's how good he was. By the way, that was an African accent. I don't know why I did that. Anyway, so Mark Marquez gets my Hustle Award for running after his bike the many times he's done it this year. So Mark Marquez, Hustle Award. All right, my Courage Award goes to Danny Pedrosa. Danny Pedrosa, for what he went through this year, he thought his career was over, had the last chance operation uh, for, the, for, for the arm pump. And I, man, I don't know, I just found a newfound respect for Danny Pedrosa. He got his career back. God bless the guy, man. He did a great job. So Danny Pedrosa gets my uh, Courage Award. Uh, congratulations, Danny. By the Balls to the Wall Award. And I mean Balls to the Wall. I mean pinning it. Go, it has to go to Jorge Lorenzo. Lorenzo, it wasn't going to Mark Marquez, but Lorenzo, and I think it was in Valencia, he reeled off at least eight, nine, ten laps of 137s within 
three one hundredths of a second of each, and now and that is incredible. That's why they call him the hammer. You can say what you want about him, but Lorenzo. He is so mentally dialed in, man. I got to give it to him. So Jorge Lorenzo gets my uh, balls to the wall award. Balls to the wall. And that's what he does. He pins it and he is done. Uh, my breakout rider of the year goes to Andres Iannone. Iannone, um, you know, he did a great job this year. He got the ride he wanted and he did something with it. And I think what helps is if Marquez is in front. Marquez being in front of Iannone is like dangling a carrot in front of a rabbit. He's like, is it Marquez? I mean, he's like a zombie, like, must catch Marquez. And what he did in the Phillip Island GP, when he stood up Rossi and Marquez, knowing that Rossi, his compatriot, was going for a championship, and he stood him up in that corner, he went for it. Now, to me, that was his breakout, uh, that was his breakthrough moment of the year to me. So, breakout ride of the year goes to Andrea Sionone. Congratulations to him and Ducati. My wow moment of the year. Wow moment of the year has to go to Mark Marquez, Austin, Texas. I was there. His factory bike, number one bike, by the way, number one, not number two, number one. His bike just zonked out. Zonked out. Seriously, like it was an old 85 VF interceptor. It just. And then he had to lay it on pit wall, jumped over the wall, and ran 100 yards. I mean, if I think Mark, Mark Marquez practices track and field, and then he gets on the track with a motorcycle. Seriously, that's how much he has to run. He, had, he was running, and then he was like, get my bike ready. But actually, it is his helmet on, so he sounded like Bane from Batman. Like, ah, could you please get my bike ready so I could make qualifying? Don't worry about it. I'm undefeated in the United States. I love the United States. They think I would get beat here, but I've never been beaten here. Yeah. So that's what he did. And it was incredible. He got on the bike, tired. He sprints to his bike, at least 100 yards, at least 100 yards, sprints to his bike, gets on his bike. And then with less than three minutes, he gets pole position. That was a wow moment of the year. I was there. That was literally a wow. So I got to give it to him. Mark Marquez is the wow moment of the year. Sportsman of the year, Danny Pedrosa. What can I say? It's a pang when it all went wrong and Lorenzo didn't come off like he should have. Danny Pedrosa, and I mean, the MotoGP journalists, they had, they go for the jugular when it's time to ask questions. They, I, seriously, they go for like, wow, did you ask that dude? Are you serious? And Pedrosa came out smelling like a rose. He really did. Props to Danny Pedrosa. He, he went over a lot of fans, including myself, for what he did. So props to Danny Pedrosa for that. Um, Sportsman of the Year, Danny Pedrosa, congratulations, Danny. Uh, race of the Year, easily, Phillip Island. I watched that race. At a hotel, I wasn't even supposed to be staying in. Literally, I was, I was, uh, I'm not gonna tell you, I wasn't doing anything bad, nothing dirty, like, you know, you know, meet me in room 222, like, uh, okay. I was, uh, I was actually at a hotel, I had to watch the race, I was in the Bahamas, I was in a hotel I wasn't supposed to be in, in a lobby. No sound, I'm watching it, no sound. And when all four of those guys came down the front straightaway, I literally was like, like, I kind of wanted to cry, not really cry, like, but it was so euphoric. Wow, I never said that word before. Euphoric. It was so euphoric. A U2 song should have been playing. That's how euphoric it was. But I was like, it was truly a beautiful day. Ah. Uh, it was just, yeah. So, Phillip Island, when those four guys went down that front straight, that, that to me, I was going, this is the greatest race I've ever watched. As I was watching it with no sound, I was like, this is the greatest race I've ever seen in my life. So, Phillip Island, greatest race ever. The uh, what the moment of the year, the what the... Moment of the year goes to Sepang, and you know why. When Rossi looked at Marquez and whatever, how you interpret it after that, you do your own interpretation. Whether Rossi kicked him, whether you say Mar Marquez ran into whatever happened, whatever happened, that was my what the moment of the year, and it changed everything, everything. And when I say it changed everything, it changed everything. It's kind of like indoor plumbing. You know, when that happened, I'm sure it changed. You're like, whoa, we don't have to go out and like risk a snake, you know, bite me on the ass. We got indoor plumbing. This is awesome. So, the what the moment was the pain. Uh, the uh, who looks the baddest ass in, in there in there uh, between the bike and the leathers. Who looks the coolest? The coolest. Who looks the coolest? Got to go with Paul Spargo. Tech Three Yamaha. Both those guys, man. That that is the best color scheme ever. The Tech Three Yamaha. I love their bikes. They look cool. Got to go with Paul Spargo. Yeah, Paul Spargo. I love the guy, that green with the black and the yellow. Yeah, black and yellow. But yeah, he looks the baddest. So I got to go with Paul Spargo, who looks the baddest ass between bike and him and leathers. Uh, the comeback rider of the year, this guy proved attitude is everything in life. Attitude is everything. You change it. You turn that frown upside down, Charlie Brown, and your life will change. And it's proof positive. And that goes to Bradley Smith. I don't know what 
his deal was he, uh, the year before. I didn't know him that deep, but I just knew I guess he had a bad attitude. And even he said it. Even he said it. But he changed it, changed his, his outlook on things, and you see it had happened. Only he and Rossi completed every race this year. That's incredible. Bradley Smith, I would like to see him get a factory ride, but where's he going to go? Maybe up. Uh, I like to see him go to KTM, actually. I don't know. I want to see him get a factory ride. He deserved it, but a great ride by Bradley. He definitely is the comeback rider of the year. So, now, the rider of the year award usually goes to the champion. Usually it does, but the champion had a weird year. He had the thing with the helmet and guitar, then his helmet missed it up. What factory rider's helmet misses up? It's not like he's an open rider. They have to buy their own helmets, I think, right? But he's a factory rider. He gets all that money, and his helmet missed it up. Like, Lorenzo had a weird year. He, you know, one, at one time, he reeled off those, what, three or four, you know, okay, here we go. And then, you know, then all of a sudden, like, what? Like, he, he was nowhere to be found. And then he comes back again. And then it's like, then he starts nipping, nipping. Then he crashed. Then you go, okay, it's over. And then he starts coming back, starts coming back. And it was just really weird. But my, comp, my Rider of the Year award in MotoGP, and this is only because the way I see it, the way I see it, he was the most consistent all year. I'm not going to mention what it, the, the negative aspects. It goes to Valentino Rossi. What he did this year on that bike, he was con he's the most consistent rider. He, win he won when he had to win. I mean, and Valencia, he was, he was behind the eight ball in Valencia, but he passed 21 riders. Granted, Petrucci goes, hey, after you. Um, but still, it, what Rossi did was incredible. I'm not going to talk about the negative aspects. He's my MotoGP rider of the year. I think... What stood out for me, probably, very weirdly, that's not even a word, is it weirdly, is in uh, Silverstone, when it was raining, and he ran the race of his life. Marquez was coming for him, and it was raining. Marquez crashed, then Petrucci was coming, and he was gaining on Rossi, and Rossi still won in the wet. So Rossi's my rider of the year. Um, I'm not going to mention any negative aspects of what, of what happened, but definitely Valentino Rossi, rider of the year. Uh, MotoGP Awards, like I said, congratulations to everybody, to Scott Jones, to Dave Emmett, Matt Burt, Dylan Gray, Danny Pedrosa, uh, Jorge Lorenzo, Boss to the Wall, uh, uh, Bradley Smith, Paul Spargo, and definitely Valentino Rossi. Thank you guys for watching my BTGP Awards. I appreciate you. Have a great offseason, and I will talk to you soon. By the way, go see Hitting the Apex. Great movie. Great movie. Thank you, David Neal, and thank you, Brad Pitt. All right, guys, have a good offseason. See you later. Peace.